Our next guest this morning takes us back to the 1950s and 60s. This is when the Coors dynasty reigned over Golden. However, this was also a time when dramatic changes hit the Coors family and the Golden community. The death of an heir offers an inside look at a murder that rocked an American brewing dynasty. Author Philip Jett shares more. It's so nice to have you on the well, show. thank you, Denise. It's a pleasure to be here. Briefly explain the events that happened the morning of Tuesday, February 8th, 1960. Well, Adolph Coors III, he was not called Ad. He was on his way to work, and uh, he lived on a ranch south of Morrison, and the kidnapper was waiting for him on a single-lane bridge, pretended that his car was broken down, and Adolph Coors, being the good man that he was, wanted to get out and help. Mm -hmm. and he was kidnapped kidnapped now was there a code name for the investigation back it was then? the FBI always has great names right. for these things and and the course was Cornap 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 oh interesting what made this <laughs> kidnapping case unique kind of out of the norm well I think you know kidnappings weren't that prevalent anyway even back you know 50 years ago almost 60 now and um, I think it, more or less the uniqueness was just the course, yeah, the course name. I mean, this was a very important person, and they yeah. still are. You know, they're one of the greatest families in Colorado. And so when a Coors went missing, everyone took notice. Of course, very kind family in Colorado, yes. too. Mm -hmm. So this went wrong, though. It, they originally wanted to kidnap him for money, but it ended up he was it, murdered. It, it did. It never went any farther than the bridge, unfortunately. Um, the kidnapper, you know, wielded a gun, told Ad Coors to get in the car, put shackles on, and Ad Coors was not going to do that. So they struggled and fought on the bridge, and Ad ran for his vehicle and was shot in the back twice. Oh, my and goodness. And died there on the bridge. I never knew this history. I, I, this is amazing. I'm going to have to pick up the book. How big was the manhunt? I would imagine everyone came It was came huge. Out. It was huge. In fact, um, Adolph Coors Jr., Ad Coors' father, called the FBI director J. Edgar Hoover personally and said, you know, I want you on this case. So not many families can get the FBI of director course. personally on the case yes. and overseeing it. And he sent as many men as he could to this area. There were hundreds and hundreds and the search went clear across the continent into Canada. What? They didn't catch him right away? No, it was several months. Why? I mean, how was he able to escape? They, they didn't know who he was for a long time. They had to do fingerprint analysis, and this was before computers. Oh, yes. And, you know, so they had to individually check fingerprints, and, you know, they had over 150 million fingerprints in the FBI at that time. And so it took a few weeks. And, and was it true he kept changing his identity? He changed his identity. Unfortunately, he didn't change the way he appeared. Um, you know, he, <laughs> he was... <laughs> that wasn't very smart, now, was no, it? No, I would have grown a beard, dyed my hair yeah. red, but he <laughs> didn't do that. And, you know, he supposedly had a genius IQ, but mm. uh, when you read the book, you'll begin to wonder about that. Is, is that a picture of the killer right that there? That is. The, uh, oh, it's just so eerie. Yeah, he's almost got a little James Dean look there. Oh but uh, he, he was a very cold-blooded individual. Now, tonight you're going to be featured at the Tattered Cover, Aspen Grove. I am. You'll be signing books. I will be. Tell me a little bit more what, what well, the evening will I'm going to be there. I'm going to read you know, a chapter from the book and answer <laughs> questions and then do some signing. And so we can get an autograph copy. And meet wonderful people here in Denver. This is truly, truly a, an exciting book to read. Um, I'm excited to get to the end, to be honest with you, even mm. though, I mean, you know, you've told me a few details, but I'm excited to read more. And I'm curious, you were a former uh, corporate attorney. You live in Nashville. What drew you to Colorado and to this investigation? Well, Colorado is sort of my second home. I come out here and I have sons and we snowboard and oh, snow wow. ski and I fly fish. I'm like, <laughs> I haven't had your problem. You don't throw I, the poles in I the water like pole, I do, do you? But, <laughs> you know, and I fly fish. So, you know, I've gotten to know Colorado and this story came up and I had discovered no one had ever written about it. Right. So I made it my own. I'm glad you did. And you say the death of an heir, Adolf Coors III, there were a lot of myths out there surrounding this murder, but this actually details truly what happened. This is a factual account. I have more information than the FBI, anyone on the planet. Uh, in fact, the Denver Public Library asked me to donate my research to them because I had gathered so much. How did you gather it? What did you do? It took time. It took about three years. Wow. And, um, you know, to get the trial transcript, it had been destroyed, lost. FBI report, they moved slowly. 
And I, I flew out here, interviewed some individuals who are still living, like the prosecutor, the assistant mm -hmm. prosecutor, the, one of the defense attorneys, one of the uh, um, sheriff's deputies. And um, so I just compiled a lot of information. I would imagine back in the 60s, much different to convict someone who, a murderer really, compared to what it is like now. It was much, it was a much simpler process. Um, he was captured in October of 1960. The trial took place March of 1961. There was no slow moving. I mean, in four months, he's already on trial. And um, he was not, he was convicted, but didn't receive the death penalty because, uh, and, and back then, there hmm. were, you know, in about a year and a half, four people were uh, executed. So executions at that time period were quite prevalent. Why but didn't he get the death period, the death sentence then? Well, in order to be convicted, uh, in order to receive the death penalty, he had to have either an eyewitness or he had to confess. Uh -huh. It had to be one of those. And he wasn't confessing and there was no eyewitness, so he went to prison instead. Oh, my goodness. So interesting. I can't wait to finish. Thank you so much for Thank giving us a Thank you very much for peek. having me. Again, make it a point to meet author Philip Jett, 7, tonight at the Tattered Cover Aspen Grove location. He'll have his book talk there. He'll be signing the books. And you can also learn more online if you'd like to check out his website. Go to philipjett.com. That's philipjett.com.